Anyways, welcome to Corn Fed County. Uh, I'm the reverend in these here hills, and uh, we want to welcome you to our shindig here this evening. Uh, we're hoping to have a good time and good food, but there are a few housekeeping things that I would like for us to go over uh, before we get on with the evening. First of all, um, if, uh, if any of you need to use the outhouses, we have four of them. Um, we have uh, two, if you go out these doors and turn to the left, left, or to the right, there's one of each and you guys can figure out which one you need to go in. Also, um, we've had this shindig for a couple of evenings here and it was always dark because uh, we started a little bit later. So we had the advantage of daylight for a little bit, but it will get dark as it goes on. At least that's what science says anyways. So when it does get dark, please be very careful if you need to get up and leave. Um, as you will learn later on that we don't have any doctors here in Corn Fed County. Um, so either you get better or you die. So we prefer not to have to deal with any of that this evening. So please be careful. Uh, when you head out. Uh, also, uh, feel free to turn your chairs so that you can see me. We don't want anybody going home like this tonight after they're done with a stiff neck. Uh, just turn your chairs around and so it's easy to see the people up here. Also, uh, if you are pleased with the job that your servers and the people that bring your beverages, uh, you are uh, encouraged to leave a tip on the table. That tip uh, goes to our youth group. 100% of it goes to the youth group for some of the activities and some of the projects that, uh, that they would like to uh, take on this summer. So before we move on, uh, I'd like to uh, ask the blessing on the food that uh, you already ate and the food that we're going to eat a little bit later. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this evening. We're so grateful for the opportunity to gather together and have fun and to uh, break bread together as well and to just enjoy each other's fellowship. We pray for the cast this evening that the um, words and the lines come to them easily and that things go well and that all together here we have a good time and that we honor you in what we do. We're thankful again for the food. We ask that you would bless it to our bodies. Be with us this evening. We're thankful for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy the evening and enjoy a hillbilly wedding. Ain't it soon time you moved, Paul Bales Nickel? Ain't made up my mind which way to move yet. Paul Bales Nickel? Huh? Hit be morning. Can't be. Well, there's light coming in that there window. Wouldn't be no light coming in the window if it weren't morning. You can see for your sail. Nah, I ain't turned that way. Ain't you moved yet, Paul? Takes time. You can't hurry a game of checkers. That's what you said last night. Obi's ma here will think he fell into the river. Now then. Obi Upschlager, you get on to home. No checker game should last more than three days. Oh, Ma, just about when I decided to. 
You get home, Obi. Shouldn't you offer him some vittles before he goes? It'd be a long walk back to his cabin. He'd only be three miles as the crow flies. They'd be our nearest neighbors. Now you go, Obi. Oh, I reckon Ma'll start to miss me about now. You know, once a week she takes a roll count, make sure she ain't lost none of the kids yet. How many did you have last count? Eighteen. I don't know where the extra one come from, though. She usually only, we usually only count seventeen. I heard Mrs. Ofenduff from over the valley was missing one. Maybe that's where it come from. Well, we'll send it over if and we find it again. You come again, Obi, only the next time don't you stay so long. So long. Hey! What is mine? You lazy young uns! It'd be 5.30. You overslept. I ain't sleeping on the end tonight. They was shoving me up the covers all night, Ma. Well, you should have shoved back. Are you scratching, Five? Are you sure you took that bath last spring like I told you to? Sure I took a bath. Zeely's the one what wouldn't. Are you sure you didn't get too close to Seely lately? Nah. Besides, I don't think she has the bugs no more. Was anybody talking to me? It'd be time for breakfast. I already milked the goat. Four, you get the lantern off the table. Five, go get the soup. Six, go get the bread. Junie Lou, you go back and get the bucket of milk off the back porch. Seely, pick up them burlap bags. Funny may get rid of them covers. Chop, chop. Get ready. Get set. Go. Let me hug him all the bread now. Come on now. Yeah, here's a spoon. Get me some bread. Boy, that was good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nothing like a nice, quiet meal to start the day off right. All you people think about is your stomachs. Oh, mm. you think you're pretty since that traveling salesman give you a sample of that newfangled lippers, don't you? Well, I've seen you eating just like anybody else, Junie Lou. Mm -hmm. Much you know how I feel for Bell's Nickel. I got a supper. Since when? Yep, it'd be true. Junie Lou's sweet on Homer Upschlager. What? Oh, me, Father? Yep, me and him is Gordon. Uh, that's the silly stuff. Oh, my rattlesnakes are swell. Ornery little critters, though. Look at that one. He's mad because the other gets all the crumbs. Junie Lou, do you think Homer's going to ask you to marry up with him? Sure. Do you? Get all of you. Clean off the table. Seely, you get them ugly critters away and you go and feed the hogs. Six, you go help her, but mind you, don't get too close to her. I don't want you scratching. The rest of you, get to the kitchen. Be careful with the soup. There's enough left there for dinner. Just scrape the leavings off of the dishes. They ain't dirty enough to wash yet. Maybe we'll wash them tomorrow. Pop, pop, 
Huh? Pop, open your eyes. I gotta talk to you. Oh, has lightning struck the cabin again, Ma? No, it be nothing like that. It be Junie Lou. She aims to marry up with Homer Upschlager. Does he aim to marry up with her? I reckon. Well then, it's settled. She's sixteen. Plenty old enough to get hitched. Pa, there'd be more to it than that. Junie Lou's sixteen, sure. But Bonnie May and Celie be older. Celie be nineteen, and she ain't hitched yet. Well, I reckon I didn't know she was that old. Why, she's an old maid. And if and she don't get hitched soon, ain't nobody gonna want her. Why she'd be around here with us the rest of our born days? That'd be awful. She's too dirty to have around the house. She's unsanitary. Yep. And if if and Celia and Bonnie May don't get hitched, ain't nobody gonna want 'em. Pop. You gotta find husbands for Celie and Bonnie May. No, Ma. It take years to find anybody to marry up with Celie. Now you gotta do it, and it can't take years. Oh, I'm tired. Don't you see, Pa? We still have four, five, and six to think about. They be getting to the marrying age soon. The older ones has gotta be out of the way. How come we named them four, five, and six anyhow, Ma? Well. Remember, the school marm was a boarding here with us for a while, and she was trying to teach you to count. You only ever got as far as six. If and Celie, Bonnie, May, and Junie Lou had been born after you learned to count, reckon they would have been one, two, and three. I recollect now. Now, Pa, I'm going to send Celie in, and you're going to get a husband for her. Do you understand? Can it wait till tomorrow? No, it can't. You're going to do it right now. You wanted me, Paul? Nope. Yeah. Your ma says you ought to be getting hitched. Now, who'd you like? Getting hitched? What for? Well, all gals is supposed to get hitched once in their lifetime. Now, who'd you like? Why、well, ain't thunk about it? Well, start thunking. We'll just wing 'em nice and easy. When we get the buckshot picked out, we'll have ourselves a wedding. Oh, Paul! I don't want no man with buckshot in him. It ain't gonna hurt him much. He'll be good as new in no time. Well, there ain't but five fellers that ain't married in these hills. I suppose I don't like one of 'em more than the other. Then it don't matter. We'll just wing the first one we come to. All right. Howdy! Is my brother Obi here? <laughs> Hate to get blood all over Ma's floor, but this will save us a bunch of walking. Now hold on there a minute. Ain't he kind of skinny, Paul? Are you looking for a husband for Celie? Yep. Uh, Homer's. Much fatter than me, and and Obi's prettier. I'm skinny. See, ain't nothing but skin and bones. I'm a lazy pool cat too. I never work. My teeth are bad. I, hi, hi, hi. She like Homer and Obi much gooder. Obi's sweet on Bonnie May, and Junie Lou and Homer's a courting. That leaves Chaz. What's the matter, Chaz? Don't you want to marry up with me? Who me? Yeah, ain't she good enough for you? Oh, I didn't say that. She's swell. Only, only what? Only I'd rather be dead than married to her. <laughs> okay, if and that's the way you want it. Oh no, I'm too young to die. I was only fooling. 
You was? You'll marry up with me? Oh, just think, the six of us, one big happy family. Six? Well, yeah, me and you, my pet hog, and my three rattlesnakes. Oh. <laughs> okay, enough of this talking. Get back, Seely. It's time to show him you ain't a bad cat. Paul, don't hurt him. He's kind of hurt. Oh, Paul, what are you aiming to do? God dang it, Bonnie man, you ruined my aim. Me and Chaz is getting hitched. Well, Chaz, he don't look too happy about it. All I come for was to find my brother. I'm all to account this morning, he turned up missing. Obi be home by now. We was playing checkers. Now. No, Pa, you just put that gun away. You can't do things like that no more. Who says? These books I read say so, Pa. You just can't do them things no more. Ain't no book telling me what I can do. See, Lee, you don't really want to have a husband that has to be shot to be made to marry up with you, do you? Won't get one no other way. Oh, sure you will. There's got to be a feller out there somewhere who will find you purdy and want to marry up with you. Well, he ain't showed up yet. Well, no, but you don't really want Chaz Upschlager, do you? Well, he don't rightly appeal to me. Well, there you see. You have to marry up with somebody who appeals to you. But we got him and we ain't got no other. Chaz, where in a tarnation did he go? He probably got out while he could. Confounded, Bonnie Mae, you let him get away. No telling one will catch another one. Oh, Pa. You read too much, Bonnie Mae. You're always in one of them books the school marm gave you. Books is wonderful things. Well, your ma says you and Celia's getting hitched, and I aim to see that you do. Me? And Celia? Yep. You're cleaner and purtier than Celia. Figure we won't have much trouble with you. Oh, Pa, I don't want to get hitched. I don't love nobody around here. Obie's sweet on you. But I ain't sweet on him. I just want to read. Your ma says you're getting hitched. And I aim to see that you do. No, Pa, please. Who in the tarnation to knock it? Oh, nobody knocks in these here parts. If it be strangers, I hope they don't sit on my rattlesnakes. I wouldn't want them hurt. The strangers? No, my rattlesnakes. Howdy. Hello. Do you by any chance have a telephone? Huh? A, a telephone, you know? It's a... It's no use, Aunt Lucy. These people have probably never heard of telephones... Well, sure, I heard of them. Ain't never seen one, no. They're coming in, let them come in, Bonnie Mae. If they ain't, shut the door. You be strangers hereabouts. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ronald Maxwell, and this here is my aunt, Lucy Maxwell. We were touring through the delightful hills when our car broke down. It stalled about two miles up the road. That horrid road. If only we'd kept on the main highways. This was your idea, Aunt Lucy. You're in a fix, mister. I'm Paul Bellsneagles, and these two here is my oldest young'uns. Bonnie, me, and Seely. Dirty one, Seely. Is there anywhere we could go to use a telephone? Ah, uh, they got a telephone in Horsehair Junction. Wonderful. Where's that at? Oh, about 30 miles as the crow flies. I'm not a crow. How do you get there? You don't. I ain't never been that far in my life. But... Old Chot Cheslaflyer does, though. He goes down once a month, gets supplies, sells them to the rest of us. A month? Oh, Ronald, what are we going to do? Paul, I heard Jod's going tomorrow. He has a big car. You can go with him. That's wonderful. But what will we do until then? Well... Paul, oh, they, they could stay here, couldn't they? Reckon. Don't own hold much to city folks. Take too many baths, if and you ask me. That can't be healthy. 
I wouldn't think of staying in a place like this. What alternative would you suggest, Aunt Lucy? Sleeping out with the mountain lions? We'll pay you well. Oh, no need. Never turned down nobody what needed help. Come on, kids, let's tell Maul to put some more water in the sow belly soup. <laughs> Sow's belly soup, indeed. I still say, Aunt Lucy, this was your idea. I did it for you, dear. One more year in medical school and you'll be a licensed physician. No need to remind me. I've worked hard to be at the head of my class. Dr. Ronald Maxwell. That sounds wonderful. But this passion you have for charity work and doctoring people who can't pay for it, you'll never become successful that way. There are different kinds of success, Aunt Lucy. Only one that counts. That's why I wanted you to come on this trip, to get your fill of poverty. Perhaps it's just as well this happened. Maybe living with these people might make you see the light. Money is one of the most important things in life, Ronald. Let someone else do the charity work. When mother and father died in that car crash, their will left me financially independent, and you knew it, Aunt Lucy. I'd be a good man for the clinics. Let the other doctors who aren't as wealthy go for the money. But those nasty, smelly people. You're one of the elite, Ronald. You should stay with your own kind. I'm sure your dear dead parents would have agreed with me. I'm sure they wouldn't have. I knew them longer than you, and they had confidence in my judgment, or they wouldn't have made me your guardian. Aunt Lucy, you were their only living relative. Ronald, I've always treated you as if you were my own son. I'm sorry, Aunt Lucy. You've been wonderful in so many ways, only... Gee, mister, be you really a doctor? Well, almost. Of course, only doctor I ever seen was old and had whiskers. Ah. <laughs> uh... He died three winters ago. There's another doctor around now, I suppose? Nope. Well, what do you do if you get sick? You get well or you die. Why do you bother talking to her, Ronald? She looks as if she hasn't taken a bath for a month. <laughs> Ain't never took one. <laughs> oh, dear. Ma says the lady can sleep in our bed. Out by the kitchen stove, we'll sleep in here on the floor with the young'uns. I told Ma you was fancy folks. Oh, and the young feller, he can curl up on the carpet by the bed. I presume you've changed the bed sheets? What sheets? This is intolerable. I think it'll be fun. Sleeping on the floor will be a new experience. I guess we'll have to make the best of it at any rate. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to wash up a bit. Uh, if then you can stand it, go ahead. Do you have a bathroom? There'll be a pump just outside. Hey, Ma, dump the applesauce out of the basin for a spell. The old lady wants to take a bath. Old lady? Oh, and drop some rags out of the dog's bed. She'll probably want to dry off, too. Uh, I think I'm going to faint. Come on out, Lucy. Let's step outside and get some fresh air. Here be the stuff, Paul. Ma sent along some of her lye soap, too. Take it out to the pump. Wow, you guys ripped into some candy. Paul! Bonnie Mae was right! I never could have stood Chaz up, Schlager. That be the feller I want. That dude? Oh, Paul, he smells so gold darn purdy. Okay. <laughs> if and that's the feller you want, then that's the feller your hat and you'll have. Or my name ain't Ernie Royal Horatio Belschnickel. And that's the last trouble I want out of the two of you today. Ain't I got enough to do what with these hair strangers? Her as fussy as a lost polecat. And now the cousins are coming to visit. I gotta get. But you told me to get a husband for Seely. We're the last time, Paul, if in Seely wants that dude. 
You got to catch him fair and square. You can't shoot a dude for a husband. It just ain't fashionable no more. I don't see why not. It wouldn't hurt him much. Well, maybe it would have been okay if you hit him the first time, but I don't want you trying again. Them city constables will be up here in no time anyway to take him away from you. Paul, oh, if and only you wouldn't have missed. Wasn't my fault. I got excited when his aunt fainted. Because she dropped her glove in the lye soup water and the glove dissolved. Well, maybe the lye soap was a little too strong, but if and you ask me, that glove wasn't made of very good material. Such goings on, you two ought to be skinned for hurting five. It wasn't Paul's fault five got in the way when he shot. He should have been minding his P's and Q's. It took us a half hour to pick the buckshot out of five. That poor girl won't sit for a week. Now, I don't want to have no more shooting. I got to get, fry up a big pan of hog brains for the cousins. They can eat a body out of a house and a home. Oh, Paul, what are we going to do now? Dad, right if and I know. I got to get that dude, Paul. <sighs> well, I'd even give up my rattlesnakes for him course, maybe I wouldn't have to. Maybe he'd like them once he got to know them. <laughs> no, Celia, there ain't just ain't no way to get that fancy dude to marry up with the likes of you. There's got to be a way, Paul. I wonder what you'd look like if you wasn't dirty, Celia. Paul, you wouldn't make me take a bath. It wouldn't hurt you none. Everybody's got to do it once in a while. No, no. There's got to be another way. Like, maybe I could bake a pie for him. You can't bake. Well, oh, maybe I could make him a pair of socks. You can't sew either. Well, I'm still the best hog collar in Cornfed County. No, Sheila, that wouldn't make no difference to him. You're going to have to take a bath and fix up and comb your hair. The water trough's just no, outside. Pa, no, I, I ain't never combed my hair in my life. Well, you got to now. No, Paul, please, not a bath. And you're going to put on a clean dress, no, too. No, Paul, I only wore this one three months. No, Paul, please, not a bath. Paul, no, that's water. What on earth was that? Well, it sounds like Paul's giving Celie a bath. You mean she really hasn't had a bath in years? It's hard for you to believe folks live like that, ain't it? A little. What's wrong, Bonnie Mae? Oh, nothing. Ronald, I... Are you ashamed of your family? Yes. Yes, I am ashamed. It's not your fault that they're poor and have never been taught to live differently. But that's not so. The school marm, she tried to teach them, only they won't listen. If you feel so strongly, why don't you leave the hills and go into town where people are clean? You could at least make a pretense at civilization. Well, you don't understand. See, I love the hills and the people. They're my people, and I don't want to go away from them. I'd like to help them live better so they'd be happier. That's wonderful, Bonnie Mae. I feel the same way about people, too. But it's different with you, Ronald. You're going to be a doctor, and you can really help people. But me, what can I do? You've got the most beautiful brown eyes. I do? And the greatest smile. I do? Oh. Glad I was around to help your sister. Uh, what was her name? Five? Buckshot could be very painful. Strange how your father's gun went off accidentally in that way. Um, anyways, what are you reading? Oh, here. Uh, this is my arithmetic book. See, I was teaching myself fractions. How can you concentrate around here? Well, it is kind of noisy, so I just head on down the hill to the spring house. It's real pretty there. 
lots of moss and ferns and little pink flowers and forget-me-nots. Bonnie Mae, I... Oh, you don't have to say anything. I understand. I don't think you do. I'd like to talk to you and see your spring house and pick some of those forget-me-nots. May I? I don't know. Please, Bonnie Mae. So you do have a dude living there. News certainly travels fast. Where would you get him? Is he gonna stay? Well, this here is Ronald Maxwell. This is Obi and Chaz Upschlager. They live just down the trail. See, Ronald's car broke down about a mile or so up the road, and him and his aunt's going with John tomorrow to Horsehair Junction. I always wanted to see a big city like Horsehair Junction. Hey, looky here. What is it? It must be a gal. Nothing else wears dresses. Then who is it? It be Sheila. It can't be. It's clean. Come on, Sheila. Don't be bashful. Howdy. Why, you certainly look fine, Miss Sealy. Of course. Now, if you'll excuse us, Bonnie May has promised to show me the countryside. Good day. Well, he was still in a mighty big hurry to get away from you. Maybe we can get Ma to bake a cake for you to give to him. That'd be swell. All men like cake. Was I dreaming? Or did you see what I just see? I sure did. Sealy Bellsnickle took a bath. And for a dude, shut your tater traps. Hey, what's eating you, Obi? Well, next thing you know, Bonnie May will be falling for him too. He was standing kind of close when we walked in. You'd be sweet on Bonnie May, ain't you, Obi? Yep. And Homer's mighty sweet on Junie Lou. What if she gets a hankering for that dude, too? This ain't good. We have to get rid of that there dude. How? He ain't leaving on our say-so. We can get Bonnie Mae to walk him down by the cliff, and we could sneak up behind him and give him a big... No, you can't do nothing like that with them foreigners. It'd have to be something to get rid of the critter in one piece. Well, that's harder. Dudes is cowards. Maybe we could scare him off. There's a haunted cabin down by Possum Creek. No, dudes don't believe in ghosts. Now, ain't that funny. But they do know about guns. And they're afraid of them. But you said we shouldn't hurt the critter. We don't have to hurt him. If there was a feud and shooting going on, he'd be gone soon enough. Feuding? Man, we ain't had no feuding for 20 years. I wasn't thinking no real feud. Just a make-believe one. I don't, I don't get it. All we gotta do is make Paul Bell's nickel start shooting at us. He's a lazy varmint. So is our Paul. Once the feudans chase that dude away, we'll tell him it was all a joke, and that'll be that. You sure? Yep. Well, how are you aiming to start this here feud? That's easy. All you gotta do is make like you wanna kiss Seeley. And she'll yell for her Paul, and the feuding will start. Seely wouldn't yell. She'd be too happy if the dude wanted to kiss her. 
kick her in the shins at the last second. That'll make her yell. Reckon. Well, I'll wait outside while you do it. Hold on there. You're the one who's gonna do it. Oh no, hit be your idea. Sure. I done all the thinking. Now we got to be fair and square. You do it, I done the thinking. Uh, but I don't... Listen, I'll be waiting right outside, Chaz. But so long. Obi. Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Aunt Lucy, I insist upon knowing why you called me here. Bonnie Mae was showing me around the place. It was interesting. Yes, you seemed very interested. Oh dear, there's absolutely no private place to talk around here. Excuse me, ma'am. Just because they're poor is no excuse to be rude, Aunt Lucy. They've been very hospitable to us. That, that Mr. Bellsnickel and his gun. We'll probably all be murdered in our beds tonight. You're being far too dramatic, Aunt Lucy. Anyone can have an accident with a shotgun. What was he doing with it in the first place? Maybe he was shooting at rats. Anyway, it's back in its place now, so let's quit our worrying. I can't help it, Ronald. I'm worried sick. There's nothing to worry about. Tomorrow we'll go into the town, telephone the garage. We'll probably have to spend the night there, but I'm sure we can find a motel. I was thinking of other things, not just the physical danger. What do you mean? You're becoming so friendly with these natives. This Bonnie Mae person, for example. Aunt Lucy, she's a fine girl. I enjoy talking to her. It's very obvious how much you enjoy it. No one living in a place like this could be fine. I wish you'd just ignore her, after all, one of your social standing. Aunt Lucy, I'm sorry, but I will not listen to any more of this. Well. Oh, howdy, Miss Maxwell. Just a moment. Yes, ma'am? I'd like to talk to you a bit. It is rather lonely around here, is it not? Well, yes, ma'am, if and you're not used to it. I miss the excitement and activity of our lives in the city. Has Ronald told you anything about it? I've noticed you two talking quite a bit. Well, I reckon I do most of the talking, but he's told me about his work, you know, in the hospital. He's so anxious to get out and be working with sick people all the time instead of just studying. But uh, he hasn't said much about his home. I'm surprised. We have a large, beautiful home with our own private swimming pool. The house has 10 rooms, two servants, and a gardener. In fact, one of our servants reminds me of you, but there'd be no need for Ronald to mention that. He never notices the servants. They're so far beneath him. Oh, I remind you of one of your servants? Very much so. Oh, but please don't be ashamed. My servant is a lovely girl. She scrubs the floors and never causes me any trouble. She knows her place. I see. You should see the girls Ronald dates. They're all from the country club, of course. Beautiful girls, immaculate clothes. Once he even dated a European princess. A real princess? Oh, quite. She was a very kind girl, too. In fact, she gave one of her old dresses to our servant girl. Wasn't that kind of her? Oh, yes. Incidentally, I have an old dress which I have no use for in my suitcase in the car. You can have it if you'd like. It's far nicer than anything you'd have here. Oh, um, no. No, oh, thank you, Miss Maxwell. <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about her anymore. After all that trouble to get Ma to bake a pie for him, and he don't like pies? You sure you want that dude, Celie? Must be something wrong with him if and he don't like pies. I don't care. I want him. 
Well, he ain't took a shine to you since you took a bath. No, Celie, we ain't gonna get him unless we use the gun. But Ma won't let us. Who's the boss around here? Ma. Yeah, I reckon. Hey, maybe we could arrange it so Ma wouldn't know. Ma knows everything. If we was to start a feud, we could wing him under the cover of its fire, and you'd be married up to him before Ma even knew what this was all about. But we ain't feuding with nobody. Well, we could start one for a spell. And how are you aiming to do that? Hmm. Well, if, if Chaz or Obi was to offer to kiss you, I could come out and start shooting, and that would start a feud right there. Oh, Chaz and Obi ain't going to offer to kiss me. Well, make them. If and I knowed how, I'd have done been married up a long time ago. Gals is supposed to know them things. Sit. What we need is some soft lights and sweet music. Won't work if they, if and they can see you too good. There we have it. Paul, that ain't soft light. It's dark. Carnation. Ah. Uh. Paul, if Chaz and Obi break their necks a coming, we won't have no one to start a feud with. Just a little light. Well. There. You don't look half bad in that light now. Now for the soft music. I wonder if the cousins have come yet. Hey, Ma, have the cousins come yet? Yep, and they're eating already. Tell them to come and bring their music. You wanted something? Howdy, Cousin C. Can you stand here and play for a spell? I didn't think you liked our music. Whatever give you that idea. I got that idea the last time we visited here, and I caught you trying to throw our instruments in the lake. And I was pretty well certain of it when you set fire to the cabin we was playing in. Ah, uh, yeah, that's just your imagination, Cousin C. Ah, uh, I love to hear you play. Well, if you want us to. Cousins! Paul Bellsnigger wants music. Let's give him some. That be soft music, Paul? Just stay sitting right here, Zeely. I'll go find Jazz or Obi. I thought Ma left the mule in here to sleep again. You sounded like a mule. I'd rather be a mule this minute. I'd rather be a horse myself. By the looks of your face, you ain't got far to go. Huh? Oh, nothing. You like music, Seely? That is what this is, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's soft music. That's soft? Romantic, too. Don't do that. Did I scare you? Uh, what ails you, Chaz? Flies. Gotta catch them. Well, what are you trying to do? Catch them with your tongue? 
Uh, you know, Seely, that bath really brought something out of you. Well, I know it did. You should have seen that water. That wasn't what I meant. I mean, you're almost hurty. What in tarnation do you think you're doing? I'm going to kiss you. You are? That darn polecat kissed her cousin. Huh? Let's get him, fellers. Paul Bell Snickle, let's get his whole family. Yeah, I go again. Some darn polecat kissed Seely. We aim to get him. You do? Got any extra guns? In the shed. After him. The Upschlagers! Chaz kissed me! The Upschlagers? Pa, you gotta stop them? What if Homer gets hurt? Oh, we'll stop them after a while. After we have some fun. You think you can stop them cousins once they start something? I could never stop them from eating. Oh, uh, well... You gotta stop it, Pa. Yes, before it's too late. If an enemy gets killed... A feud like that could last 30 years! Oh, this is horrible. Well, I think it's fun. Me too. Hey, you want to get shot? I ain't playing. Paul, what are we going to do? I don't know. Well, we got to stop the feud. I don't know how. This is ridiculous. All this shooting over a kiss? Well, you won't think it's so funny if you get shot. Mother Ronald, get shot? They shot my box of rattlesnakes off the windowsill! He me, he beat me, the rattlesnakes are loose! <laughs> Give me your knife, Paul. Oh, Chuny Lou. I feel sick. Quick, we must get clean bandages. I got it. I gotta suck poison out or I'll die. Oh, Chuny Lou. Aw, make him stop! I'll go tell him. I've got some antitoxin in the car. It's just the thing for rattlesnake bites. I knew my aunt and I would be in for some wild country. Well, well, then go get it! She can't die! Uh -huh. Oh, Homer. If and only Homer was here. As soon as the shooting stops, I'll go out to the car and... That's their answer! They shot through my head! Next time, if I go out there again, it'll be through my head. But Juni will die in a few hours if we don't get that antitoxin. Well, you can go get it. We'll take care of her till you get back. <laughs> no way. But why not? You said she'd die without it. But, but the shooting. I've never been around anything like this in my life before. I can't dodge those bullets. I might get killed. There's no way I'm going out there. And here I was thinking you was somebody. But you ain't nobody, Ronald Maxwell. Nobody but a yellow belly coward. Do you see any? Nope. I ain't seen one since they broke loose. They're gonna slither out and get somebody when they least expecting it. Oh, if only Ronald would come back. I'm so worried he'll be killed with all that shooting out there. It'd be too dark for much shooting now. But he's been gone so long. For all I know, he may be lying dead somewhere. That horrid Bonnie Mae person, she made him go. All she did was to call him a coward, and she was right. He's not a coward. Not after Bonnie Mae got done calling him names. He got so gall dang mad, he ran out of here to get that medicine. Oh, there was bright daylight when he left. I can't believe it would take him so long to reach the car. 
I just know something's happened to the dear boy. Oh, I never should have brought him on this horrid vacation. He didn't want to come. And if he's killed, it'll be a judgment on me for trying to keep him from the work that he wants to do. I see it all now. Oh, he feels his passion for charity work, and I never should have interfered. I did it because I love him, and now he might hate me if he's alive. Obi! <laughs> oh. What'd you do it for, Sidi? It would have been kinder for you to shoot me. I thought you was one of those gold dang rattlesnakes. Oh. Why, Sealy, I ain't never heard you talk that way about your rattlesnakes afore. Well, one of them bit Junie Lou. And maybe she might die. And it'd be all my fault. I don't care if I ever see one of them snakes again in my life. You mean it? What's she acting up for? Oh, she's scared of the snakes. Seems to think they won't get her up there on that bench. I see one. Where? Climbing up the leg of that bench she's on. <laughs> Why, Obi Upslager, there ain't no snakes on that bench. I know it. I had to get rid of her so we could talk. Well, what's there to talk about? This here feud. We've got to end it. Well, maybe it be ended. I ain't heard no shooting for quite a spell. No, that's only because it's dark out. The moon will be up bright after a while and it'll start again. Reckon you're right. And you know what, Obi Upslager? You won't find the place healthy if my cousins see you. How are you feeling? All right. Does it hurt much? The snake bite? Nope. Well, well what ails you, Junie Lou? You gotta perk up. You can't die on us. It'd be all my fault. Oh, stop it, Seely. There ain't nothing wrong with me. But the snake bite. The snake didn't bite me. I put the lid on the box before anybody see that none of them got out. You mean? They're all still in the box? That's right. They didn't get out at all? That's right. Everybody was so worried about me that they didn't bother to look. I I just told Maul about it, too. But it doesn't make sense. Well, don't look at me that way. I only said I was bit so they'd stop this silly feud and wouldn't hurt Homer. But it didn't stop the feud. And that dude's probably been killed and it'd be all my fault. But, Junie Lou, I saw you with Paul's knife. I saw you cut the bite. Oh, Steely, I always was the dumbest one in the family. I got the knife and cut my arm quick so as if anybody seed it, they wouldn't know that there wasn't no bite. You're right. Every snake is in here. Let's get moving again, boys. We had everything in sight. Oh, the cousins are coming. They'll kill Obi if they find him here. Then this feud will never end. I'm again. You got more relatives than I ever seen. There'll be more coming this way. He never should have come here. Here. Put this on. I'd rather be dead. Hurry up, cousins. Before we leave, we gotta get every upshaker in the valley. His hair! What are we gonna do about his hair? Oh, oh here! I knew I shouldn't have put on your dress, Seely. Hess, here they come. 
Who are you hiding? Uh, nobody, Cousin Zeke. Uh, well? Uh, this be Rosie Bell, Cousin Zeke. She's mighty pretty. Why haven't we ever met? Why haven't we ever met before, Rosie Bell? You're as pretty as the flowers are growing in the dump in the holler. Oh, you naughty boy. I bet you say that to all the girls. Sure, when I say it to you, I mean it. You got a feller? <laughs> sure she have, Cousin Zeke. She couldn't be bothered with you. I'll go get my shotgun. Oh, Junie Lou was only fooling. I ain't got no feller. Want to stroll down Lover's Land in the moonlight? Who, me? <laughs> Rosie Bell's very bashful, Cousin Zeke. Come on, Zeke, you got shooting to do. You fellas go ahead, I'll catch up. Uh, aren't you feared they'll get lost without you? Nah. How about it, Rosie Bell? Lover's Lane's mighty pretty this time of year. Oh, you embarrass me so. I'd have to tell you about my hogs, too. I got 16 of them. Figured when they was old enough to butcher, I'd have enough to get hitched on. Say, Rosie Bell, ain't you paying me no mind? Sure I was. You was saying? I was telling you about my hogs. Oh, yes, hogs is very sweet critters. Sweet? Rosie Bell, is there anything the matter with you? Oh, Cousin Zeke, I reckon I'll never thank you for starting this here feud for me. I'd rather have Rosie Bell to the thanking. Maybe you could ask her? Well, I, I feel like I should do it, so um, thank you. <laughs> Reminds me of the time Ma threw a wet pickle out my face for not bringing in no kindling. Uh, well, uh, thanks again. <laughs> I recollect now, Ma threw two wet pickles at my face. Stop it, Celie. You want me to lose my supper? Cousin Z, don't you think you better get out there with the others? They'll be mighty far ahead of ya. Well, maybe so. Rosie Bell, will you wait right here for me? Oh, sure. Just you run along. Better mean what you say. Nobody breaks a promise to me. Great. Now he's going to be after me a double. <laughs> once because I'm an upslagger, and once because I'm Rosie Bale. I'm sorry, Obi, but it seemed the only thing to do. I know. Well, I better get out of this here rig. Junie Lou, what's this moth been telling me? I ain't got no snake fight? That's right, Paul. I just seen the dude and the preacher coming up the trail. I told him when he left, bring the reverend along back. Celia's getting hitched. I am, Paul, honest? Yep, we've had enough of this fooling around. But, but, Paul... Hush, uh -huh. hush up. I'm a-taking care of this. You take Celia out and you and Bonnie may get her dressed. Who in the tarnation is that? That'd be Rosie Bell, Paul. She's new round here. Never thought I'd live to see the day I'd find a gal uglier than Seeley. <laughs> Rosie Bell, you can help get Seeley dressed. Who, me? Yes, you. Then you can stand up for her at the wedding. You'll make her look good. Bridegroom won't think he's getting cheated. Yes, help me get dressed. It'd be fun. Uh, Y'all need a bath first. I took a bath first. Every bride needs a bath before she gets hit. She gotta do it. Not another bath, Ma. No, please, Ma, please. I, no, Bonnie May, no. Listen, listen. You gotta do listen. it. I'll do anything you say. Anything. Just don't make me take a bath. Two baths in one day might kill me. Come on, no, come on, no, come on, no, come on, come on. <laughs> Well, that's that. See, five getting married ain't no fun at all. You gotta take a bath. It's over. You can relax now. Howdy, Reverend. Howdy, Paul Bell's nickel. 
Why, your young friend here, you can thank him because he stopped a few. He walked right in front of those guns and such a sermon he gave them. Why, I couldn't have done half the good myself. They wouldn't have listened to me if you hadn't been with me, Reverend. Well, that's fine. At least there won't be no shooting spoiling the wedding. Now, who's getting married? Sealy. Oh, wonderful. Who's the lucky bridegroom? Um, you'll find out. Oh, I see. It's a surprise. Uh, and how? I'd like to be there. Oh, oh, you'll be there. Uh, we'll give you the place of honor. Fine. Now, Junie Lou, I've got the medicine right here in my pocket. Junie Lou, you take uh, Mr. Maxwell and the Reverend out to the kitchen, tell them what you've done, and uh, put some more water in the sow belly soup so there'll be enough for the wedding. I don't think she needs to explain that the rattlesnake didn't really bite her. You knew? Well, you didn't exactly act like a person with a rattlesnake bite. Don't forget, I am almost a doctor. What must you think of me? It's okay, Junie Lou. I know why you did it. That's why I didn't say anything. No wonder you weren't in no hurry to get the medicine. Come on, let's go put some water in the soup. We can let the reverend in on the story. Well, gals, you get some flowers for the wedding. I got some things to take care of. wonder who Sue's going to marry up with. I got an idea. Yep. If only it weren't so dark. Thought her. The moon's come from behind another cloud. Come on, Four, you gotta help. Pa said so. Five, we got an ID. Any ID who Sue's gonna marry? Nope. Can't figure out who wanna marry Seely. I knew it! There he goes! Who goes? What are you talking about, for? It's Paul. He pinned him his next one to help him. What fur? She was all head up and hollering about them snakes. But we all was. Don't you get it? Don't you see? Nope. Paul's gonna make the dude marry up with Seely and he wants his aunt out of the way so she won't do no squawking. Great day in the morning. Ma's going to be mighty peeved. Maybe we better go tell her. Absolutely not. You know how Paul gets when he's mad. He's mad now. We'll catch it good if we say anything. It ain't our business. I reckon you're right. Marcelie. Oh, Ma took her around back to find that old curtain that Effie Colcastle wore at her wedding. Oh, it makes such a wonderful veil. <laughs> we know something we won't tell. That shot six. Oh, what do you know? Tort nothing. She's just talking. You know who Celie's going to marry up with? I bet that's it. Now, how'd we know that? Sue's going to marry the dude. Six. Y'all catch it for telling. Just you wait. But that won't happen. He won't marry up with her. Well, you might as well know all of it now. But don't you dare tell Paul we told you. You got to promise. Mm-hmm. Well, fine. I promise. Now tell me. He's going to make the dude marry Seely. He's going to use his gun. Oh, Pa wouldn't do that for real. Sure he would. But Ma would never let him. Ma ain't got no say when he gets mad. And he's mad now because Junie Lou's telling the snake bitter. Oh, this is awful. I got to stop him. He just penned Miss Maxwell in the hog pen. But there ain't no stopping him now. Well, there has to be. This can't happen. All right, I'm going to stop the wedding. <laughs> I can't even do that. Well, I don't rightly know. I got to think. Oh. Well, you all can head out to Mall now. She'll be wanting you to act as bridesmaids. There ain't no use for us to wash our faces if any you think we're going to stop the wedding. Ah, oh, she ain't going to stop. No wedding Paul has a mind to have. Come on, let's get ready for the ceremony.
Hey, what's going on? Oh, howdy, Chaz. What ails your sister, Bonnie Mae? They walked right past me if they'd never seen me before. Well, I reckon they got their minds on a wedding. Wedding? Who's getting hitched? Well, Seely, if and I can't figure out no way to stop it. There ain't nobody in these hills she's marrying. Nobody'd be that dumb. It'd be Ronald Maxwell, Chaz. But, uh, ain't you forgot about the feud? Oh, the feud's over. Well, sure, it'd be for now, but it might start all over again if my cousins find you here. What makes you so sad, Bonnie Mae? You're lower than Grandpa's drawers the time they fell off in the wash line. Well, it's just I can't figure out no way to stop the wedding. Pa ain't likely to listen to me if I just talk. Why are you so set on stopping the wedding? Ain't nobody want to look marry up with her ever again. That's just it. Mr. Maxwell doesn't want to marry up with Seely, but Pa's gonna make him. He penned Miss Maxwell in the hog pen already. I can smell trouble. I'm getting. Oh no, Chaz, wait. Maybe you can help me. Uh-huh. Ain't I had enough trouble for one day? A little more wouldn't hurt you none. Them ain't feathers your paws got loaded in his shotgun. Well, I know, but maybe you could say you would marry Seely just until we can get Mr. Maxwell and his aunt out of town? And then who'd get me out of town? Your paws aiming to have a wedding, and I ain't gonna be it. Oh, please help me, Chaz. Wait, I got it. I'll call Pa. And he'll come in here and start talking to me. And while he's looking at me, you sneak up behind him and hit him over the head. Me? Hit Paul Bellsnickel over the head? Yeah, yeah, he'll never know who done it. No. Mm -mm. Oh, please. Bonnie Mae, he would kill me if he ever found out. But he ain't likely to find out if only you and me know about it. Well, what will you give me if I do it? You can have one of our old Sears Grove Buck catalogs. <laughs> Gee, that'd be swell. Okay, call your Paul. Okay. Paul! Paul! Be they ready for the wedding? I don't reckon. I ain't seen them. Then why all the yelling? Aw, oh, be it Ronald Maxwell you're going to try to marry off to Seeley. That ain't none of your business. You just can't do it, Paul. She wants him, don't she? Well, yeah, but if she marries him, she'll have to leave you and Ma and go off to the city, and you might never see her again. Yeah. But who'll tend the hogs if Seely goes, Paul? If Seely goes, there'll be one less hog around here to tend. Oh, Paul, I won't let you do it. I'm going to find some way to stop you. Hold your tongue, gal. I'm through talking to you. Now, did this four, five, and six put flowers on the table like I asked? <laughs> Howdy, Paul Bellsnickel. What in the tarnation do you think you're doing? I was, um, I was dancing. Yeah, that's it. I was pretending this stick here was Bonnie Mae. We was going to dance at Seely's wedding. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Ah, 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 ah. I've had enough trouble out of you. You're heading for the pick pen with Miss Maxwell. No, Pa, you can't. You just watch me from the pig pen. No, Pa, no! Hi, I, I. The bride's ready now, Reverend. She looks mighty pretty. Say, did, did Paul give you the papers with their proper names on? Wouldn't want them to be married with their proper names, you know. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll take care of. Fine. Hey, boys, Zeke. We ain't finished eating yet. Well, you can finish eating later. It'd be time for the ceremony to begin. Ooh, we have some music, I see. 
if and you can call it that. I, I know to I know an old lady wants who who liked to hear Zeke and the cousins play. Of course, she was almost deaf. Now, Reverend, you're looking mighty fine tonight. I'd like you to stand right over here. There you go. Well, we're just in time for the ceremony, I see. It'll be happening soon. Wonderful. Has anyone seen my Aunt Lucy? I was hoping she could see the wedding, too. Nope, and I ain't got no time to look for her. Okay, boys, let her rip. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. <laughs> if anyone knows just cause as to why they may not be joined together, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Out there, in the pig pen. Is that my Aunt Lucy? Hush up, young feller. You know your relatives better than me. But I think there's just pigs out there that look like your Aunt Lucy. Shall we proceed? Ronald Maxwell, do you take Celie Bellsnickel to be your lawful wedded wife and promise to... Me? Yes, you. Uh, I don't want to marry up with Silly. What's wrong with you people? You can't just... Oh, yes, I can. No, no, no. I refuse to be a party to a wedding of this sort. Get on with the wedding. Well, if you put it that way... But Silly doesn't want me. Do you, Silly? I'm a dude. I'm skinny. I've got flat feet. What? You don't want me, do you, Seely? Of course I do. I ain't backing out now. I took two baths. Oh. Uh. Get on with the wedding. Well, Maxwell, do you take her? I, I... You what? Do. Do you, Seely Bellsnickel, take this man? I sure do. Stop the wind. Oh, are we too late? Well, I'd say you wasn't late enough. We ain't quite hitched. Oh, thank goodness we're in time. Uh, Seely, I got something to say to you. It can wait till after the wedding. Now, how'd they get out of the pig pen? I seen you lock them in the pig pen, and I let them out. And I ain't waiting, Paul Bell's nickel. Even if you shoot me, you lazy varmint. Paul, don't shoot! Now, Seely, you can't marry up with this here dude. He ain't the man for you. You wouldn't like them big city ways. Why, they ain't even got hog pens in the big cities. They ain't? I was always too afraid to say something to you before, Seely, because of them pet rattlesnakes you had around, and I be a feared of rattlesnakes. What? My rattlesnakes, where are they? I took them out and I let them go. Now I want you to marry up with me if you'll promise not to have any more snakes. You can have all the hogs you want. I ain't fussy like your ma. And they can even come in the house, but no snakes. Oh, Obi, of course I'll marry up with you. <laughs> uh... Obi's over there. Obi! Well, somebody get married. I got a funeral waiting. Hold on. Ronald, I hope 
you don't be too disappointed, but I reckon I'll marry Obi instead of you. You're right. You're kind of skinny. Me disappointed. <laughs> now, now what's wrong with her? Don't tell me I gotta get a husband for her too now. I've got a better idea. Bonnie May and I were getting acquainted. Nothing like being locked together in a pig pen to get acquainted. I'm sorry, I'm crying. It's just, you guys will be leaving now and going back to the city. You know, I learned a lot while staying here. Maybe some of the things I always thought were so important really weren't. I guess people are people wherever they are. Now you're speaking my language, Aunt Lucy. And I don't want to leave Bonnie May here. I... That's just what I was going to say. Your parents left a will with a provision about educating poor, deserving students. The matter of choice was left to me. I'm sure they'd approve of Bonnie May. Aunt Lucy, you're a peach. It's been a long time since anyone's called me that. You mean you want her to go along with you? Yes, if we may. I'm sure with all the reading she's done, a few months of intensive study would be sufficient. Then she could study nursing. By the time she's done with nursing school, Ronald will have his medical degree, and if they still like each other the way they seem to now, who knows? We could come back to your beloved Hills, a doctor and a nurse. We could teach them, and they'd listen to us. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Pa, Ma, can I? Oh, let her go. I'm tired of looking for husbands for him. <laughs> well, I reckon you might as well. You always did read too much to get a husband hereabouts anyway. Somebody get married soon, or I'm leaving. Don't go! We're ready! Yep. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in this company to join together... Uh, the show. We also want to thank all of our cooks, our servers, our cleanup crew, the ticket takers, the seating hosts, uh, all the decoration, the people who put the decorations on the table, the set designers, the set builders. Uh, I think that pretty much takes care of it. Oh, and the lights and sound guys. Let's. Re
Our biggest thank you goes to the two people who were very instrumental in putting this together. Jess and Sharon, would you guys, uh, ladies, come on up here, please? We have something we'd like to present to you in appreciation for all the hard work you guys have done. Thank you.